Yeah. I was killed uh, before that. Yeah. yeah. He was killed shortly after you had gone to war, right? Um, uh, oh, he, he was killed in 1940, just a year after when they started bombing London. Yeah. And he was in fire service. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. He was a volunteer fire service. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah. voluntary, yeah. Yeah. Because um, my dad was like that. He's, um, I was away at sea in the war, and my elder brother was in the Air Force fighting the war, and he felt he had to do his bloody bit, you see. He couldn't go in the forces because he had a bit of a heart problem. So I joined the fire brigade, auxiliary fire brigade, as they call it. Yeah. Uh, he fell through a glass roof, right? Pardon? He fell through a glass roof. Yeah, you, you, the fighting fires in the docks were been blitz. Yeah. And he was on the roof of this big warehouse, and it was a lift shaft with a glass top on the roof, you know. And they painted it black because of the blackout. But he couldn't see it. He was dragging a hose along, you know, and I stepped on it and we all fell back. Mm -hmm. Sixty odd feet, broke every bone in his body, practically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, I got I got a message, you know, um, uh, so I managed to get home. And I'm glad he did, he got me, and he got home. I managed to get home, only for a couple of days, you know. And uh, managed to get, he was alive when I saw him, but. He was unconscious, really, you know, mm -hmm. in the hospital. And, um, but we were there for his funeral, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he could send off, you know, a fireman's funeral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, so that happened to me and your mum. Then I never saw her again until after you, your brother Michael was born. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hence the picture upstairs. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah. How long were you on the mill for then? Um, about 18 months, I think it was, yeah. yeah. And then my skipper decided I should become, um, get some more um, promotion. Mm -hmm. So he sent me off for another course in barracks. And there I qualified as a petty officer. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I joined the um, Cassandra. Mm -hmm. It was a petty officer. And, uh, and of course that was the one that got blown up coming out of Russia. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And sort of we didn't. Was that um, escorting another convoy? Yeah, but yeah. we'd we taken the convoy out there yeah. and they'd emptied. Oh. And uh, before the convoy came out to come back home, yeah. they used to send the uh, destroyers and their school vessels out because they uh, oh. The U boats used to wait for them to come out, you see. Mm. So we used to come out and sweep it all. And uh, we got torpedoed um, while we were doing that, actually. We were only about a day out. We blew the hole in the front of the ship off. I lost all my messmates. Yeah. I happened to be on watch. But the rest of my messmates I lost them all. Lost 80 men all together. Uh. And um, uh, nightmare that was, you know. but. Uh, it was in rough seas, freezing cold. We told the abandoned ship, but no, I, I think one or two guys to jump out the side of it, they killed them immediately in the water. Oh, from, it was so cold. Oh, yeah, it was yeah. freezing, absolutely. Yeah. And then, um, <coughs> decided that one the other destroyers tried to get alongside us so we could abandon and get on board it. Mm -hmm. But again, it was so rough, we kept bashing my couldn't do that. And um, then my officer said to me, me, will you get the wounded in the boat and see if you can get the boat down and right over the one? I said, you're kidding. Yeah. We never get the boat down in the boat. Caesar's come right over us, you know. Yeah. We just wrecked it. Yeah. And, he, and then he realised he was wrong, you know. Yeah. And uh, eventually we got a tow to one of the other ships and they towed us back in. It took us three days, but all the time we were waiting get to either sitting yeah. Yeah. Didn't yeah. you say you, you put a canvas or something over yeah. the front? Yeah, canvas on it. Yeah. Yeah, because the bow was being run over and uh, in a storm, a violent storm, you try and keep the ship either stern or bows or front or back in, into the storm. Mm -hmm. Because if you're sideways to it, it's, you know, yeah. capsize your breath. Yeah. The state we were in, 
So we rigged this big canvas awning, which normally we would use over the deck during the sunshine. And the the sun shade, the yeah. Shade. And we hoisted it up as a sail, so the wind would catch it and keep us uh, stirring up the thing, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, amazing really, but there are things you do. And we got back eventually in there and um, tied up and uh, in fact all the crew went on the convoy and came up, except the six of us were left there with what they called care and maintenance, you know, on the ship, what was that doing? And I was stuck up there till the war in Europe finished after that in but fact. How long was that? How long were you in About a year. A year on that boat? Because yeah. we were Back hoping the, uh, the, the, uh, it, when we got back would have been just before Christmas yeah. in 1945 yeah. and um, we were hoping to get some relief Christmas leave yeah. um, because we missed that we were stuck up there. Yeah. So well, the war were in all those finished. dead bodies on there all that time? Yeah. Oh no, 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 no. Not the bodies weren't, no. The Russians told us they're your comrades, you get them out. And so these, what happened? How, how, what did you do with them? Well, the, um, it was so cold, yeah. the corpses in, in the wreckage froze yeah. and there were all sorts of angles you know, yeah. and we had the freedom. And these guys we knew. Yeah. We got them out and we wouldn't dry dock took him down at the bottom of the dry dock. It was me and another guy, and a, a junior officer. And um, it was our job to uh, put me in hammocks. We used to put the hammocks, you know, put the bottom, and then come with another hammock, and wrap them up, but, and we, then we'd take them out of the sea. But when we put me in the hammocks and the other, there was an arm sticking out, or a leg sticking out, frozen. So we had to cut them off. Cut the leg or the arm off. Put it in, then wrap them up. Yeah. Oh, so you buried them at sea? Yeah, yeah. Is that yeah. what you did with them? We, 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 um, we managed to uh, uh, co-op a, a Russian uh, little fishing boat yeah. um, uh, with an engine on it, you know, yeah. and we put the bodies on there and we took them out further, not out to sea, but in yeah. the inlet, if you like. Yeah. And then we buried them out there. Oh, isn't that awful? About ten, yeah. Really? Yeah. Ten bodies, yeah. And um, and bed on there. I've always been this bloody stupid officer. He thought he should do his duty and read a little prayer. Yeah. And uh, so we put these guys. You know, we throw a bucket of water on a plank, yeah. which immediately froze. And then we put a body on there and wipe the plank. Uh, the guy that finishes prayers and then tip the thing up. So oh, they slipped down the ice. Yeah. yeah. And he, he started reading out this bloody bit out of the Bible there. And I thought it was something about bloody, <laughs> um, some stupid thing, nothing to do with a burial at all, you know. Hey! Oh, sorry. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. They were bad and come back, and I was just so stuck up. Oh, terrible that was. Terrible. Yeah. You sleeping. had no food or anything, did you? Pardon? You had no food or anything? No. Had nothing. Nothing. No, the Russians thought they never had anything anyway, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. I can't believe that the Navy would just leave you like that. No, well, what, we had to wait for convoys to come up. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, we would borrow a boat, row around the ships, yeah. and um, scrounge all we could. Because <laughs> I had no clothing. All I had was what I still had in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I lost everything on there, you know. Oh, wow. And, um, and you, you had to stay on the ship because yeah. if you left it, it was up for grabs, is that what it was? Well, where would you leave the ship? Where would you go? Well, I mean, if you joined the convoy and sailed away. Oh, no, you couldn't do that. I mean, our job and <coughs> orders were to stay with the ship. Yeah. Um, to stay with the ship. The Russians were... Um, there's a political thing going on, really, because the arrangement was they would fit a dummy bows on the ship. You know. um, uh, weld a uh, dummy uh, plate on, you know, so we'll get back. And uh, they were after the ship because it was a brand new ship and it had all the uh, latest technology on it. And um, they said they had no steel. And this was all over the months, you know. So then the, um, 
at, he said, oh, we will stay in steel plates up as soon as we can on the next convoy. Which eventually they did arrive. And then the Russians are so primitive. They had to fit these things on just all welding torches. Now it took them bloody weeks and weeks. Having <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> power. Yeah. And then put a load of uh, rubbish in the front to act as uh, ballast. You know. yeah. And uh, um, when we got back, you know, the war in Europe finished anyway. Yeah. Yeah. 